Okay, good afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to the Inside Out Lecture Series. Our mission is to bring the best minds of our generation to inspire and support the work students and staff do across the School of Art, Architecture and Design at Leeds Beckett University. To this end, we have flown in renowned speakers from around the globe. Today, our honoured guest speaker is truly a global artist working in Seoul, New York and Paris. In order to enhance the cultural life of Leeds, we make the lecture series open to the general public and available to an international audience online. We need to thank um, our major partners, Yorkshire Sculpture International and their project manager, Jane Boyru, as well as Yorkshire Sculpture Park and their director of programming, Claire Lilly, um, for making Kim Suja's visit today possible. A spliced rope, numerous cords integrally connected to one another, forming invisible and almost seamless connections. Materials are gathered, spun into a line that can be followed, read, touched, and understood. Drawing a thread around a sphere as it spins, pinning down developments in recorded language. A textual mapping. A simultaneous and imperfect timeline, slash, not. Nomad, weaver, gathering, utterance emitted, farmer, weaver, reaping, Notation recorded. No, not, note, notation. Stick, stitch, stick, script. Song, harp, warp, word. Word is thread and the thread is language. Please join me in extending a very warm Yorkshire welcome to Kim Suja. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a real uh, pleasure for me to be uh, uh, with you uh, this afternoon uh, in Leeds uh, uh, University of Art, uh, Architecture and Design. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed very much already uh, meeting some of the uh, staff members here, uh, having an amazing, inspiring evening and morning already. Uh, I have to thank uh, Claire Lilly uh, for this amazing uh, uh, occasion who brought uh, me into uh, this uh, kind of a thread uh, from uh, Fries uh, uh, Sculpture Project. And then uh, 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 the uh, Yorkshire Park uh, Project uh, will be also uh, another interesting link with the uh, Lee's Beckett University uh, sculpture projects. Thank you uh, also, uh, uh, Jane, uh, to, to invite me and uh, to help me all of the uh, details of my trips and uh, your hospitality. And Simon, for your inspiring uh, guide and uh, also uh, for this uh, wonderful occasion to, to discuss with my, uh, about my work. Um, so um, I will start uh, with the uh, earlier work uh, of mine, uh, which is um, uh, the first uh, uh, series of sewing pieces, and also uh, the concept of sewing into daily life, uh, other daily life actions, such as uh, walking, uh, gazing, and uh, also uh, breathing, uh, etc., so that I try to uh, link uh, our daily life action, which was uh, started from uh, women's uh, activities uh, in, in domestic uh, uh, area, uh, such as uh, cleaning houses or laundry or uh, uh, ironing or cooking, <coughs> uh, decorating houses and raising kids. and loving, uh, all these uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, life uh, activities, uh, I try to uh, conceptualize in the con context of contemporary uh, painting, uh, basically, because I was trained as a painter, and all my work uh, has been 
uh, innovation uh, of uh, my uh, question on the surface and question on the uh, painting and tableau uh, that actually uh, reached me to the uh, three-dimensional sculptural uh, project uh, which brought me here. Uh, and then uh, also video performance and sound and uh, uh, light installations um, uh, that uh, expanded its boundaries uh, uh, up to now. So uh, this sewing into walking uh, was first video I made after uh, perhaps um, 11, the, uh, 11 years of uh, sewing and wrapping or making Bodari series. Um, uh, not because uh, I was uh, interested in uh, uh, demonstrating the image making, uh, but it was just a documentary video. Uh, by accident, I wanted to record uh, in my daily life uh, activities. But then when I reviewed that uh, in the studio, I realized that uh, there is a hidden process of sewing, uh, which was walking, uh, taking my, uh, considering my body as a symbolic needle that weaves <coughs> the big fabric of nature. So I, uh, it was the moment that I uh, started linking my body as a, a needle. Uh, and the, the, the nature as also a big fabric of nature, uh, of, uh, 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 of fabric. So while doing this performance, uh, I also uh, realized that the camera frame is uh, also another way of materialistic way of wrapping uh, the world, the, the nature and the humanity. So uh, this piece has been really uh, another starting point of my performance. At the same time, uh, the uh, different uh, movement uh, from my uh, sewn pieces and materialistic pieces into uh, kind of media uh, uh, using my body as a, a performer and uh, media. Um, to, oh, sorry, uh, so I have to go next. So um, going back to my uh, earlier pieces uh, that questioned the uh, surface and the canvas, uh, I started also a series of uh, sewn pieces using uh, my grandmother's used clothing or my mother's or uh, acquaintances and friends' uh, clothing. But normally, uh, I would use uh, traditional uh, clothing from, uh, I found from Korea. The question on the surface and the um, uh, structure of the canvas uh, was also about uh, horizontality and verticality that I've been uh, questioning uh, as a structure of the canvas and the structure of the uh, canvas fabric. But at, the at this time, I was also uh, very much contemplating, uh, searching for the, uh, the stru inner structure of the world the language or the, uh, the nature or the architecture or furniture, uh, everything or our uh, mind. Uh, so uh, it was all about uh, searching the inner uh, hidden uh, cross fix uh, structures in uh, everything in the world. So these uh, allowed me also uh, to move on to uh, assemblage, uh, to, in a way, dig the different way of uh, approaching the uh, verticality and horizontality. Uh, instead of, a, uh, in a way, a needle, uh, I think I uh, installed two poles that were uh, uh, wrapped around uh, with the fabrics called uh, um, the, the Mother Earth, the Mother Earth. The first one was the, the Earth and the uh, 
uh, sky. And the next one was called uh, Portrait of Yourself. I did in 1991. And uh, the first one I did was 1981, the first uh, song piece. <coughs> Uh, but th there was a moment that I uh, had to do this uh, song, uh, song piece uh, as my practice because uh, I was uh, uh, actually sewing a uh, bed uh, with my mother. And it was th the moment that I, my mind was so much uh, about questioning the verticality and horizontality of the world and questioning the surface. So when I was putting the needle onto the, uh, the fabric, the Korean, you know, very bright, colorful fabric, uh, I had an uh, exhilarant moment and energy, uh, you know, almost like a thrilling energy, uh, as if the, the whole en energy of the universe come to my uh, body and go through this needle point uh, that touches the fabric. And that was really a striking moment that I discover this is it. I would like to uh, do the sewing uh, uh, ac action uh, and reveal the structure of the canvas. So that was the, the motivation of the uh, sewing pieces uh, from there. And this one also uh, kind of uh, expanded into different forms. Uh, but I, I find an uh, interesting relationship also with this uh, song piece called uh, Mind and the World uh, I made in 1991. Uh, uh, that is um, with the uh, old uh, anonymous people's used clothing uh, sewn together and uh, the wrapped pole uh, lean against the, the uh, ac uh, elliptical shape uh, that in a way uh, can be juxtaposed with my body uh, against the humanity uh, uh, shown in my uh, performance piece, A Needlewoman, but also my recent, most recent piece called Archive of Mind uh, that was uh, having uh, all the uh, audiences uh, uh, sit around the ecliptic, uh, elliptical table and uh, make the spheres uh, and put it uh, onto the uh, table. <coughs> so I think uh, all these are all naturally linked together uh, without even uh, planning or thinking. And some of the sewn pieces and then uh, also made a series of uh, de uh, deductive objects. Uh, I'm still doing this uh, deductive object uh, uh, as well. And these uh, also uh, naturally uh, link to the uh, sphere shape and also uh, relate to the uh, space. Uh, and uh, I did this uh, series of um, uh, wrapping, uh, and I realized uh, this wrapping series uh, onto the daily life folklore uh, objects from Korea, or this was uh, kind of made in uh, a structure uh, uh, based on the uh, frame uh, and then extended into a three-dimensional uh, uh, direction. Uh, but uh, this way of uh, wrapping enabled me to also uh, make the Botari piece, um, which was wrapping uh, with one knot uh, from two-dimensional uh, fluid tableau into uh, a sculpture by doing just one uh, making knot. Uh, because in a way, uh, wrapping uh, also is related to sewing uh, naturally, uh, if I look back, because sewing is actually wrapping the fabric around, uh, back and forth with the threads. So this action of sewing, circulative uh, uh, action and uh, process uh, is very much identical to wrapping series and also Bodhari making as a, a three-dimensional uh, wrapping. 
this was another uh, uh, reaction for me from PS1 uh, residency. Uh, I was given the space and I immediately uh, uh, reacted to the wall and the little, uh, you know, uh, empty uh, holes and on the, onto the, um, the wall. Uh, as if uh, part of the, my body is uh, put into the wall, uh, and, and also it's also about the reaction to the surface and the wall, and the boundary in a way. And came back also like um, uh, plain uh, bed cover uh, fabric, uh, with the used you know cut of um, uh, swatches of the fabrics. Uh, as a pigment um, uh, from sewing. But uh, from PS1 residency, I uh, didn't uh, feel that I need any more uh, sewing everything together physically. But I see, them, I see this uh, piece already sewn in visible way uh, with our eyes. So from that moment, I stopped uh, sewing. But uh, developed more uh, conceptual uh, re uh, inno innovation from uh, the, the idea of sewing into other uh, invisible or in immaterial actions. So this was um, uh, installed in uh, Taura in uh, Japan. Um, the Botari uh, installation and the uh, uh, Korean used uh, um, bed covers. All these um, bed covers are actually given by the brides when a uh, couple get married uh, from, uh, from the bride's mother uh, to wish their uh, happy life. So onto the uh, fabric, uh, there's always um, uh, embroideries uh, that uh, signifies love, long life or many sons. Yeah, in Korea, not many girls <laughs> at the time. And or, uh, uh, also like a peaceful, uh, happy life and uh, also the wealth uh, as well uh, with a purse and turtle uh, that signifies a long life and birds and uh, flowers for the love of the couple and dears for uh, you know happy family and kids. Uh, so all these wishes we carry uh, 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 has been in a way abandoned because all these fabrics were uh, the ones I found in the secondhand market uh, that were already abandoned by the uh, couples. So they are all uh, you know unknown uh, uh, couples and still keeps the memory of the place, memory of the uh, relationship. Uh, and I find this uh, 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 bed cover as our frame of life, uh, where we get born, love, dream, uh, suffer and die. So uh, for me, uh, wrapping and unwrapping the bed cover uh, is uh, kind of a ritual uh, activity uh, to uh, uh, commemorate uh, the, the life or the couple's bodies and their history uh, and also to unwrap, uh, to, to release. Uh, and when we, um, uh, when I uh, open up the bed cover, it signifies more like a family, love, uh, settle down, home or um, uh, you know, uh, a kind of a, a stability, uh, but at the same time, when I uh, wrap the uh, bed cover into botari, uh, it creates completely opposite notions of departure, <coughs> exile, or uh, separation, or uh, uh, war, or um, you know. Uh, all these, um, uh, you know, migration issues, um, and also even uh, the Buddha. There is also a word called the Buddhari merchant. Uh, people also carry uh, goods to sell, you know, nomadic way all around, uh, you know, different markets from here to here. 
So it creates a, a very different uh, uh, ideas and notions. But at the same time, it has also not only spatial uh, notion, but also uh, temporal uh, notion that can be also past, which was wrapped, but also present, and also future that is ready to move. So uh, interestingly, those two relationships creates many uh, different dualistic dialogue um, in my uh, practice. Uh, this is part of the uh, installation at Setagaya Museum in uh, 1986 um, at the um, uh, cafe um, of the museum. Uh, I installed the uh, back cover itself, uh, returning back to the original state of uh, tableau uh, without doing anything. Uh, and I actually did the first time in uh, Edinburgh uh, at uh, Fruit Market Gallery in 1995, uh, just uh, uh, installing the uh, bed covers on on the table of the cafe, and then uh, invite everybody uh, activities, uh, meeting or eating, listening music and dialogue. All these activities happening <coughs> around the table. Uh, taking as an invisible way of wrapping and uh, Botari uh, project. So a series of uh, Botari installation has been done uh, uh, since uh, that time. And then uh, series on the move uh, was uh, also conceived in 1997 when uh, Hans Ulrich Obrist and Hu Han Ru uh, invited me uh, for the uh, project, the same title, Cities on the Move. Um, so I took that title as an inspiration uh, and uh, made this uh, Botari truck uh, and um, made a journey uh, for 11 days in Korea, uh, throughout the Korean uh, cities and villages visiting my uh, uh, cities uh, I was born or lived or have memories. So it covered the whole uh, Korean peninsula. Uh, I used to live and um, uh, have memory. But it was interesting because it, it, it coincides the time and space in a way. Uh, that also relates my uh, needlewoman piece, but also the, the way it, it stocks on the truck uh, uh, has also relationship with the, my earlier uh, sewn pieces as well. So from that moment, I am also more conscious about my body as uh, a, a, the most complicated bundle. Uh, there is emotion uh, with the truck, but myself was kind of, uh, uh, not so much moving. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, notion of uh, standing still somehow uh, uh, has been influenced from this uh, performance. So this is uh, from Venice Biennale in 1999 uh, with the Harold Zeman's um, Aperduto. Um, that is uh, about uh, open to anywhere. Uh, and um, it actually allowed me to create this uh, uh, huge Botari truck piece, uh, almost like two ton and a half. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I was um, uh, given the last corner of the Corduria space in Arsenale and I uh, installed the uh, mirror for the whole uh, uh, wall that was about 20 meter by six meter high or something like that. Uh, and it was uh, first time I uh, uh, implied mirror as a material and mirror as uh, another way of uh, painting uh, as a tableau uh, that is in a way uh, a virtual exit for the Botari truck, uh, uh, which was dedicated for the uh, Kosovo uh, uh, refugees. Because that was the moment uh, Kosovo has a, had a uh, war, and 
I couldn't help uh, commenting that event uh, while I was working in Venice, which is next, uh, you know, uh, country uh, uh, from there. And uh, uh, the mirror, uh, the appearance of mirror, uh, is interesting in my uh, practice because I've been uh, contemplating. Uh, the destination of the painters uh, is, uh, in a way, uh, finding their own mirror, uh, searching for the whole life, uh, you know, wandering around the canvas uh, surface. Uh, so a mirror, uh, for me, has another significance uh, in terms of uh, 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 question on the surface and the tableau. Um, I think that's also uh, the reason uh, so many artists are dealing with mirror as well. So, um, so is this showing? Uh, oh, I could, yes, okay, hold on, yes. Uh, after uh, doing a series of um, uh, Otari uh, installations, a sewing work, or series of wrapping process, um, uh, in 1999, I was invited by CC uh, Kitakyushu, CCA Kitakyushu, um, and I was thinking maybe I will do a performance piece but I never did any uh, public performance or anything, so I won't have any uh, announcement or uh, uh, as a performance, but uh, I will just go and record by myself. So I went to uh, actually uh, Shibuya, uh, actually in Tokyo, to do the performance, but I didn't know exactly what I will do. Uh, I was vaguely thinking maybe I do a walking performance, but I want to do one in the urban structure and one in the nature. So I was walking uh, almost a you know, couple of hours in Tokyo, different areas, but I couldn't find the right moment to uh, execute the, the performance <coughs> as a performance and uh, recall that uh, performance. But when I uh, arrived to Shibuya, where uh, hundreds of thousands of people were coming and going, I was completely uh, overwhelmed uh, with the uh, accumulated energy uh, of the humanity uh, in the street. And I had to stop there. And I uh, was almost screaming uh, silently inside. Uh, and I couldn't move anymore. So I just stopped there, almost like planting myself and I decided this is it. I will record my standing still uh, from this location. So I had my videographer just uh, recording from my back, and uh, uh, I stand, uh, you know, as long as I could stand still, uh, which was not so easy. Uh, because it was, I was quite vulnerable also to be uh, in the middle of the street, uh, standing still, uh, you know, uh, facing all the people's uh, energy coming and going. Uh, but in the middle of performance, interestingly, I found my center and I found uh, the way how I can be still without moving my shoulder, how I can uh, breathe uh, quietly and uh, uh, almost in still, and uh, to be centered. And, and I was completely in meditative state, uh, and I was free from, com completely liberated from uh, the crowd, uh, all the speeds and movement uh, of, uh, around me. And I uh, was gazing uh, the the horizon of the humanity, just as if like a humanity of uh, the waves of humanities are just uh, coming towards me and you know moving around and moving away. So at the end, uh, my f my mind was full with uh, <coughs> compassion, 
uh, and love for people. Uh, I think in a way my body functioned like a living Bhutari that uh, in a way embraced all the humanity inside of my body and my mind. And I was in complete peace and at the end of the uh, performance, I could gaze the horizon of the humanity and it was almost like a uh, enlightenment. Uh, the white light is coming uh, from the, the, the backside of the horizon and I was completely uh, overwhelmed the, the, uh, this uh, unique and special experience. And after the performance, I decided I will go anywhere in the world uh, to meet, you know, these people and have uh, uh, experience and um, uh, have this encounter with the uh, uh, whole world. So I actually uh, continued this same performance in eight different metropolises uh, around the world. Uh, next one was uh, Shanghai. Um, and then uh, Delhi, New York, and uh, Mexico City, Cairo, uh, and Lagos, and London. So all these metropolises, uh, I, I was uh, doing the same uh, uh, standing still uh, uh, performance. And um, uh, what I was uh, interested in watching back uh, myself was that my body seems to be almost uh, like uh, uh, invisible or non-existing in this site and almost uh, erased from the waves of the uh, humanity at the end of the performance. Because once uh, the, uh, audiences look at, uh, audiences I mean the, the one uh, who sees my video performance, uh, performance as a video record, uh, they focus on my body and my back, but then uh, at a certain point, they are entering my body and they see what I experience in the situ. situ. So uh, my body, in a way, uh, functions as a media, uh, but at the same time, it shows uh, different economy, uh, social status, or uh, racial condition or uh, culture and uh, uh, even like a religious uh, status uh, or geographical differences uh, all around the world um, so that uh, uh, it uh, became a, a certain kind of a barometer of the <laughs> world. So after this uh, series of performance from Shanghai, this is from Delhi, as I, I wish to show, but uh, uh, as we have a limited time, I'll just show the stills from uh, Mexico City and uh, Cairo and Lagos and London. Uh, and this was uh, the installation view at the PS1 in 2001. And this was the time that 9-11 uh, was happening as, as well. So um, after, uh, finishing these series uh, for a, as a response to uh, an invitation from uh, Venice Biennale in 2005 uh, when uh, the world became so uh, violent and vulnerable uh, after uh, Bush's attack to uh, Iraq and all the conflicts and the religious conflicts that created all violence all over the world was really extreme and uh, I had to really also respond to that and I decided to uh, do the same performance but this time I would uh, visit all the cities uh, that are um, uh, in trouble uh, and vulnerable situations such as um, Havana in, uh, in uh, Cuba uh, that has a political relationship and difficulties between U.S. and uh, 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 Cuba. And Rio as one of the uh, kind of poor uh, city, but at the same time a lot of conflicts uh, with the violence uh, in the um, uh, favela area. And then I also went to uh, uh, the 
Guatemala, uh, Kathmandu, when there was a, uh, the civil war happening, which was a quite a dangerous moment. And uh, as you see, uh, maybe in, in the next uh, still image, uh, there were a lot of uh, armed uh, soldiers on the street and uh, gunshots are everywhere and so on. Then I went also Asana in Yemen, uh, which now is uh, truly uh, in war zone and uh, a lot of conflicts and uh, sacrifices of human uh, uh, lives are happening there. But at that time, I already sensed the, the danger in the, in the uh, city. And then uh, also Jamena in Chad, which was known as one of the most uh, poorest country in the world, um, and also post, uh, you know, the, the, uh, colonized by uh, French uh, government, uh, as well as, um, and then uh, I went to Israel uh, to, to perform in Jerusalem, that has a lot of uh, religious and territorial conflict. So all these um, uh, actually uh, locations were uh, very much uh, in danger and uh, in vulnerable situation. And I wanted to, in a way, uh, demonstrate that, but at the same time in a different way because I, this time I uh, uh, reduced the, uh, the speed so it is uh, slow mode. Uh, so the difference of the city's uh, dynamics and uh, the speed of the, each city has been in a way removed and reduced. And uh, my body uh, is staying as a, a zero point, as a stillness uh, in terms of corporal relationship. Uh, and the uh, streets, uh, people in the streets, uh, their body is you know, in a slow mode. And the audience's body, uh, when they look at the work, it become like a real time. So there's also three <coughs> different uh, time zone in that, in that uh, video. Uh, in a small, slow mo mode, but with the slow mode, I was also able to uh, reduce the tension between people, between nation, and between the uh, geography. So it, it looks as if it is very peaceful uh, land uh, in each uh, location. So that was, I think, uh, the piece uh, Simon you saw in uh, Venice Biennale, right? Yeah. So. This is, um, uh, maybe I could talk just a little bit about laundry woman. This is a, a laundry woman I uh, performed in Yamuna River. Um, the same uh, stillness uh, uh, against the uh, floating uh, river and uh, all the uh, remained uh, uh, particles from burnt body actually uh, coming from the cremation site on the next uh, yeah, left-hand side. Um, while I was standing, I was completely uh, confused at a moment uh, whether it is my body or the river that is running. And I was really uh, trying to wake up, but I couldn't uh, until almost the last moment. And uh, it was also another very strong ex experience for me doing this uh, performance. Uh, it was such a uh, deep engagement uh, to the space and time and our destiny. Uh, in a way, I was also trying to purify uh, myself and also the purify the dead bodies and their uh, destiny, uh, looking at uh, the, the, uh, the, the distance uh, of the birth and the death and the uh, eternity. Uh, but after uh, finishing the uh, performance and uh, looking at my own performance, 
I also realized that uh, this was uh, uh, this confusion has been happened uh, because I was so focused uh, as if uh, my mind is uh, like a needle point and I was uh, gazing <coughs> to the needle point which is nowhere in a way uh, in this uh, set but at the same time there was a directionality that uh, uh, directs uh, to the point uh, where there is a, a location but space. I mean, there is a, no uh, a way you could differentiate between inside and outside. Uh, we are in a, a series of talk like inside out, <laughs> but uh, that uh, needle point and gazing uh, perspective point uh, was uh, only the, the location, zero point, that doesn't ha take any physical space. That's why I thought I was so confused. <coughs> I couldn't figure out if I am out or in, or if I was running or the ro river was running. So it was, uh, for me, a big uh, also uh, kind of uh, awakening uh, performance that I did. Um, and this kind of uh, awakening uh, experience allowed me to continue this uh, series of performance. Also, uh, I did uh, also in uh, Kitakyushu, the first one uh, with the uh, Tokyo series, uh, laying down on the rock uh, that also creates a certain kind of uh, crucifix or uh, together with the uh, uh, standing still uh, performance. And then other series of uh, homeless woman performance in different cities, uh, such as um, <coughs> so, um, uh, in Cairo, yeah. And also in Lagos, I did also a beggar woman performance. Uh, that created also interesting uh, link uh, between human being and the, the receiver and also the giver and uh, fear and uh, you know, the, the uh, approaching uh, kind of uh, intentional approachment uh, that also creates a certain kind of boundaries and a link together. So after all these uh, uh, kind of performance using my uh, body, uh, I also continue to uh, do the uh, bed cover installations uh, such as this uh, uh, mirror woman uh, that I installed a two side mirror uh, expanding the space uh, and then uh, put the uh, mandala chant in it. Um, and also some of the Bhutari installation projects. Um, then this was also in New York um, uh, Green Lawn Cemetery uh, that I also uh, commemorate uh, the death, uh, placing uh, the bed covers uh, in the uh, tombstone area, uh, and then I've been always juxtaposing the Manhattan uh, skyscraper. Uh, as a tombstone of the uh, living uh, and the the, uh, the cemetery as a you know uh, city of also the dead, so it was interesting juxtapose. I I was able to uh, do some of the uh, also site specific installation. Uh, a light a lighthouse woman uh, in two thousand two was actually. Uh, to commemorate uh, the, uh, the victims of uh, uh, the civil war in happening in US because this Maurice uh, Island uh, in Charleston is the place where <laughs> civil war was happening. So uh, we actually lead up this uh, lighthouse uh, since uh, 
uh, you know, 40 years on functional uh, lighthouse. So it was a really uh, a, a great uh, expectation from the local people. So we had a big ship uh, to go and see the piece. And we watched the color spectrum. You know, it changes from blue to green or yellow to a pink to red and so on. So it also has a sound of the waves. And we were actually uh, staying in the uh, big ship together. It was really a, a special experience. And we had a really uh, memorable uh, visit uh, to the ex uh, installation. And some of the Honolulu uh, piece, uh, A Mirror Woman, The Ground of Nowhere, uh, in the Honolulu City Hall in 2003 for commemorating and celebrating a uh, centennial of uh, Korean immigrants to uh, Hawaii. Uh, and the mirror was installed underneath the, um, the kind of cylinder uh, silo uh, uh, with the fabric. Uh, so when people entered the space, uh, they were uh, very uh, astonished by reflecting the sky onto the mirror. And they were afraid of walking right into the center, but always walking around the edge of the space. Although it is a mirror, and they know it's, uh, 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 it's not real. So um, I wanted to uh, experience this um, as uh, I found uh, the experience of the uh, migrants uh, 100 years ago uh, to this uh, island, which is nowhere in, in the middle of the ocean, must have uh, the same uh, experience uh, to really having fear to enter the unknown uh, land and people. Uh, so I think, uh, in a way, the installation created the similar uh, process of entering to the uh, center of the uh, location. At the end of the installation, people were very relaxed, and they were enjoying laying down, f feeling the breeze, and uh, looking at the sky. And so it was um, interesting to see the reactions. As um, um, this one uh, was um, Mandala uh, Zukbox, uh, which can be found in the gambling shop in, in New York. And I walked by the uh, Broadway, uh, and then I saw it in one of the gambling shop, and I entered and I look at the piece and I couldn't come out without making it and title, making a title of the piece. So I uh, put the my, my first mandala chant in it uh, as, it, as it, this uh, form and uh, functionality and movement and all the elements is exactly like a Buddhist uh, uh, the, uh, mandala uh, uh, elements, like four gates entering uh, different gates and mirror uh, structure and diamond at the end as a completion of self and the movement as a, you know, uh, uh, the cycle of the life. And so, and the, also the different color spectrum is exactly the same. So. Uh, I use it later uh, with the um, Islamic and um, Tibetan and also uh, uh, is, uh, the Gregorian chant in it uh, because it was also a gentle way of criticism on uh, American uh, attack to Iraq and, and especially Bush's uh, policy uh, to, in a way, to uh, call existence uh, in a peaceful and harmonious way. Because when uh, we put all these uh, chants together, it created such a harmonious uh, kind of sound in the end. The same sound was also applied in this installation at uh, Rob Robinstein uh, Space in uh, Belgium, in Brussels. 
uh, using uh, like almost uh, 2,000 uh, Buddhist uh, lanterns um, uh, uh, responding to the uh, space. Uh, so it was uh, uh, also with p choosing pink as also peace and uh, nonviolence uh, as a symbol. Um, so as you see, uh, my work also uh, moves into more uh, uh, different mediums, um, di different media and also uh, immaterial uh, elements are appearing more. Um, this was um, uh, at the La Fenice Theater uh, that I uh, made uh, with the uh, color spec digital color spectrum uh, that uh, also breathes uh, from one color to another, uh, titling as uh, to breathe uh, invisible mirror, invisible needle. So the, the uh, image is complete. Uh, I think I have uh, also a video of it, yeah. Yeah, so the breathing, uh, actually thinking of uh, the La Fenice Theater, which is a, a lyric theater, I thought uh, singing is all about breathing uh, loud with emotion. So I decided to do this uh, breathing uh, performance uh, that also breathes within, and then, uh, also the visual uh, breathing with the gaze in our uh, uh, visual uh, experiences. And it is also related, uh, uh, sorry, I have to go. Uh, also uh, gaze as another way of uh, needling, uh, another way of sewing, uh, and also uh, the constant uh, change of the color spectrum also uh, questions where is the surface, where is the depth of the surface. So uh, it was uh, my a way of measuring the depth of the uh, canvas and uh, also long lasting question I've been experimenting. So um, the uh, this is Crystal Palace in 2006, uh, uh, run by Reina Sofia. And uh, when I saw the uh, building, uh, I thought this building doesn't need anything because it's already so beautiful. And I want to empty the space and uh, push the void as much as possible to the surface of the, uh, the building, uh, which is the uh, wind glass windows. So I had to find a solution for the glass window, which is the barrier between inside and outside. So um, we found the uh, material that is a diffraction grading film, interestingly. Uh, that has 10,000 of uh, vertical and horizontal scratches in it in one inches, in one, one inch, so that it uh, functions as a, a prism that diffracts the uh, sunlight into rainbow system. So it was, uh, in a way, a discovery, great discovery, and to be able to uh, experiment the, the, my uh, notion of painting and also color, uh, which was a lot related to Obangse color, uh, which we call uh, five different uh, cardial uh, 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 kind of uh, directionality, uh, yellow as a center and uh, white, uh, black, and blue and green, uh, all uh, red uh, and uh, bl uh, blue, uh, all signifies a different directionality or uh, seasons uh, or taste uh, or the character or the matter uh, of, of the natural elements such as uh, earth, uh, you know, metal or uh, water or air <coughs> and uh, wood, etc. 
So this uh, all, uh, in a way, linked uh, my uh, idea and uh, sources of the uh, you know, Korean uh, color spectrum and also uh, kind of uh, from <coughs> pigment to light uh, in this project. And I also applied the, uh, the mirror on the floor uh, and then uh, that also uh, have a uh, kind of visual dialogue or sewing uh, with the reality and virtuality and the, so the sound of the breath as well. So this was um, uh, another uh, great moment that I was able to expand uh, my idea of painting as well as uh, a, an architecture as a bodhari without making bodhari. So this was also shown a similar way in Venice Biennale in 2013. And it, it breathes all day around uh, different uh, intensity or different color uh, spectrum and uh, uh, also the uh, different uh, kind of uh, uh, brush, uh, brush strokes of the uh, sunlight into rainbow. The, this is from Korean Pavilion uh, in the 13. Uh, the same material, but uh, the space was very different. But there was also white wall around that uh, space, so it functions uh, as a uh, kind of canvas uh, that casts the uh, uh, rainbow <coughs> spectrums that changes every moment. And at this, at this moment, uh, there was a Sandy, Hurricane Sandy in, in New York, so I w had to stay <coughs> one week uh, with no light at nighttime. So I was uh, experiencing complete darkness in New York, and uh, I was questioning also the fear, and uh, fear of the other. Uh, when I was walking on the street, uh, there is no or reason I was um, feeling uh, uh, fear only because uh, the other is there, uh, because it's the unknown. So I was questioning a lot about the unknown uh, as, an, uh, as a notion, and I decided to create also an uh, uh complete dark, darkened uh, room in the uh, Venice Biennale Pavilion, juxtaposing this uh, space of light and sound. So that was another uh, extreme that I uh, been able to uh, experiment, uh, uh, you know, based on uh, the duality of uh, our life and uh, uh, structures. Okay, so finally, this piece, a needle uh, woman, um, galaxy was a uh, memory, uh, Earth is a souvenir. Uh, which I uh, showed uh, together with um, uh, Claire Lilly uh, at the uh, Freeze Sculpture uh, uh, this, this year, uh, was first created at uh, Cornell University uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, nano scientists and also the architect. Uh, so we had amazing uh, uh, collaboration together uh, to, to come up with this solution. Uh, when I first saw a tiny little bottle of uh, nanopolymer material that is iridescent, and I immediately ex uh, expanded my uh, imagination into like architectural space. Uh, so uh, in a way we uh, gave a certain input to the uh, laboratory that they never imagined uh, in terms of the scale uh, using uh, the polymer uh, uh, like something similar to the uh, uh, you know silk screen making uh, the, we use the uh, nanopolymer liquid 
uh, almost like same uh, method as silk screen onto the glass, onto the, uh, uh, the uh, acrylic panel, uh, so that we uh, could use it as a uh, window pan panels. So this also uh, is um, different from uh, color spectrum we normally see and uh, create with the pigments because it's a uh, colors uh, created by uh, structure. It's not a, a kind of pigment color, but it's a structural color that is uh, uh, similar to the, uh, the butterfly wing uh, structure. So um, it has an iridescent uh, uh, color spectrum, but normally uh, they use it for the medical search, uh, research when they s search the uh, cancer uh, roots and uh, you know, the evidences, they put it in the uh, body and search it with the light uh, you know, depiction. So this was uh, almost the first time uh, that uh, we were able to create this architect <coughs> architectural uh, uh, scale uh, that in a way uh, threads uh, the earth and the sky and also measuring the, uh, the scale of nano uh, and the cosmic scale uh, as uh, in one kind of continuous uh, uh, spatial uh, experiment. As, as I also put the middle mirror inside of the uh, sculpture, one can stand and feel also the uh, penetrating uh, uh, directionality to the, to the earth, uh, as well as to the uh, cosmic uh, direction. So when we see it at nighttime, it's really like connecting with the uh, cosmic uh, uh, world because uh, uh, Cornell University uh, was um, really full of uh, stars all around at nighttime. But <coughs> I'm sure we will also have that uh, experience at uh, Yorkshire Sculpture Park, because there's no light around. Yes, so I'm looking forward uh, to reinstall the piece in Yorkshire Park in next year. Yes. And, uh, This is um, the recent project to three years ago uh, at the Pompidou Mets, uh, uh, putting the same uh, uh, to breathe invisible mirror, invisible needle uh, onto the uh, uh, kind of a black, uh, like a, a white board uh, I installed. Uh, uh, on top of the mirror uh, floor, which was like 80 meters long and 30 meters in width, uh, in the middle of the space we projected, but also the I opened the both window uh, side uh, with the diffraction uh, grading film installation, so the light is coming into the space with the video. Normally, you wouldn't uh, you would avoid the light come light sources for the video, but we allowed that, and I, there was an amazing uh, effect uh, discovered because when the light is around, uh, the video projection, as it was so strong, uh, powerful projection, it uh, created the, the video as a pigment. It was amazing that uh, it completely looks like uh, the living tableau painted with pigment that is uh, breathing, you know, changing different colors. But as night falls, uh, it also changes, uh, it uh, in a way uh, dyes the whole space uh, with the color spectrum. I don't, yeah, maybe I have some images, uh, a bit darkened space. And you will see the, you know, reflection of the light and at nighttime, you would also experience completely differently uh, as a light rather than paint or pigment. And this was also in the uh, forum area, the same installation. And uh, very strong light also reflects uh, like a palette, a uh, strong palette uh, of the color spectrum. And uh, at nighttime, when completely dark, uh, the cityscape uh, uh, merges. Uh, 
uh, and the city light uh, become uh, like sources of uh, the diffraction, uh, diffracting. So it uh, creates also very intense light spectrum. So this piece, uh, also another uh, sculpture I made actually because uh, mainly my idea is uh, very much uh, about non-making and non-doing uh, and at least the minimum of doing. But uh, I made this one uh, with the reason that uh, I wanted to redefine the notion of uh, Bodhari making uh, and uh, redefine the geometry of uh, Bodhari making uh, in in its uh, uh, dimension and also directionality and also the color spectrum, which is based on Obangse color all around. And I put also mirror underneath. Uh, so it was um, another new step for me um, to uh, really uh, make a certain kind of physical uh, new piece. So my pro actually practice became more and more sculptural uh, kind of project uh, from, uh, you know, more recently, like towards this. And the archive of mind is my most uh, also a recent project in 2016 at the MMC uh, Museum in Korea. Um, and I made like a 19 meter long elliptical table uh, it was a big space, uh, but uh, consists of 63 uh, different uh, tables uh, putting together. Because the edge was uh, like a, with a curved uh, triangular shape and things like that. It was interesting too. And I invited all the audiences to sit and uh, make a sphere, uh, clay balls, uh, which was very meditative uh, action. But I also find uh, the making clay ball and sphere was very interesting uh, to see how, how we can make a sphere, perfect sphere. It's not easy to make perfect sphere, but at least uh, like a sphere. Uh, I discovered there's always two axes uh, to push towards the center uh, from all different uh, directionality that creates sphere. And these uh, movement of hands, two hands, which is uh, in a way uh, my uh, kind of part of my uh, uh, notion of duality in a way and uh, making the, the two opposite forces that created this uh, sphere shape. And as you create this sphere shape, your mind is also shaping round, I discover. And you're also centering your mind and become more meditative status of mind as you are focused on the center to create this uh, circular sh shape. Uh, so this was a kind of interesting experience for me uh, so that uh, I experienced with my assistants and they were so enthusiastic about making it and almost crazy to make it. <laughs> so, oh, this is interesting. It's not the uh, project that I enjoy and do myself, but it should be the one I have to share with uh, everybody. So that's why I made this as a participatory project. And at the end of the project, uh, it was really like full of uh, clays, like uh, hundreds of thousands of clay balls with so many participants having, uh, you know, touching also the earth for since long, long times for some adults and kids were also experiencing uh, earth. These days, kids don't touch the, the earth. So it was really uh, amazing uh, collaboration with the audiences. But I also put the sound of uh, rolling clay sound and also my gurgling sound with the water uh, so it also created a certain kind of cosmic uh, uh, movement uh, with the sound and also the vertical force and the horizontal uh, kind of movement on this and underneath the table. I think I will uh, finish here and um, 
Yeah, thank you so much for you. I think uh, the, the title always uh, came uh, very strongly linked to the concept of the new concept of the, uh, of, of the practice. So in a way, title takes a very important role for me uh, because it uh, has a certain kind of narrative from the beginning till now. And it also uh, shows how my practice has been developed. And I, I was thinking maybe one day I should do something with only titles, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, any other questions quickly I can, yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to ask, so when you talk about soaring, would you say that is in any way related to um, how we create a narrative for ourselves so time in itself doesn't actually exist, but we create that notion because it's the only way that we have to deal with the events that follow. So, um, sorry that has a name, I just can't remember it right now. <laughs> um, would you say that that applies to stitching? I think sewing has a lot to actually discuss because, um, uh, you know, it, it, it even expands to our networking, uh, to this, uh, you know, uh, global networking and uh, different invisible way of connecting together and uh, humanity and also the others. Uh, always there's a, uh, there's a different elements uh, to put together. So it has a lot of uh, more uh, like a profound um, meaning uh, in the backside and also human psychology and uh, masculine, feminine. And uh, uh, there is also the uh, notion of needle as also very much a uh, sharp point that, that could attack somebody. But at the same time, having this uh, void of the uh, needle it also allows thread inside of their body that links to others. So the needle has uh, also very interesting uh, functionality that doesn't exist by exa uh, as, as it is in the site. After doing the sewing, it disappears. Only functions as a media, and uh, needle uh, also uh, has this uh, um, kind of a duality of a masculinity, uh, femininity at the same time, and also vulnerability, and also kind of a certain kind of, yeah, attacking uh, action. So a lot to think about, and I wish to uh, have another chance to have a dialogue in the future with you all. Thank you so much.